Welcome! In this video, we'll gain practice with arrays by writing a function to read exam scores into an array. We'll test it by calling a different function to print the scores that were entered. This will be a very simple program with just a fixed number of scores. If you're enrolled in CSSE 120 or CSSE 221, you can check out the array project right now from your Subversion repository. If you're not enrolled in the course, you can download the zip file. I'm in Eclipse, and I've checked out the Arrays project. Let's go in and look at main. If we scroll down to main, we'll see that we've declared a size of an array, and we need to declare our actual array of scores before we can use the rest of the code. What it will eventually do is read the scores, and then print the array. So what you should do first is actually declare that variable to store an array that has size integers into it. You might want to pause the video to do that. Okay, so I'll assume that you've tried it. So I have an array of scores. The scores will be integers. And the size of it is given by the variable called size. So if we take and save that, and run the program, control F11, you'll notice something interesting here is that it's actually printed the array, because we haven't read anything in yet, and you'll notice that the data is uninitialized. Again, unless you initialize your variable, you get whatever garbage was in memory. Let's look at the print array function. We'll see the print array takes the array as a parameter, and it also takes the size, because you remember that in C, arrays don't store their own size. Within the function, we have a loop that goes from the beginning to the end of the array, so from zero up to but not including the size, and it will print out that position in the array using square brackets for the subscripts. Let's write our read scores function. Here we're going to have to prompt the user to enter in a, a number of different integers, which will be determined by the size parameter passed in, and then store them into the array. Pause the video now and try to work out a solution on your own. OK, I assume that you've tried something. Let's start by asking the user for some kind of a prompt here. Please enter and then give them how many integers they want. So please enter so many scores as integers. And then I think I'll loop through and just have them enter in that many. So for, for i equals 0, i is less than the size, i plus plus. I'll need to declare i, so int i. Within that, I'll prompt them for the integer. Please enter score. And we want it to print score 1, score 2, score 3, and so on. So I'm going to actually put in i plus 1 here, because i starts at 0. I'll flush my buffer, as I usually do before I use a scanf. And finally, I need to get the element of the array that I want. So I'll have a scanf that's going to be entered in as an integer. And then I need the address of the variable that I want to change. Well, the variable that I want to change is part of my array. So it's a sub i. And if I want its address, then I'll use the ampersand as usual. Remember to put a semicolon at the end. And we can see that we have something like that for our solution. Let's check to see how it works. And it looks like I messed something up here. Indeed, I mistakenly ignored this warning here about the formatting. So let's fix that. So we want to enter in that size. Let's try it again. And last, please enter four scores as integers. So score one, we'll say, is an 80. Score two is a 90. Score three is a 100. And score four will be a 72, say. If we enter those in as such, then it will print back those scores for us. The nice thing about using arrays is that in my program, I could go back to main, change the size to something else, 
rerun it. And now it asks me for five scores. So we have a 90, an 80, 76, 90, 92. And it successfully gets five scores. That's it for now. Until next time, I'm Matt. See you later.